Hello, welcome to lesson number three. Um, I wanted to just take a sh just a few minutes to just say hello, and especially since I did not uh, provide a video um, in lesson number two, this will be kind of, of a um, update of the material we have covered in lesson two, and a preview for this lesson three. Lesson three has lots of stuff in it. We're beginning to pick up steam, as I indicated we would, and pulling information from various sources, your traditional um, textbook, this one, and many online resources. And, and I've talked to many students have said they have already started reading um, The Shelf book, A Beautiful Board. And uh, actually some students have said they've already finished, uh, which is always a, a good thing that you found that much interest and, and fascination with something. If you haven't, don't worry. We have a long semester ahead of us. The um, directions for our book report is posted under assignments that relate back to the chef reading, the beautiful board. So please make sure that you take a look at those. On the discussion boards, we've had some really good discussions about what is addiction and if addiction is voluntary or involuntary. Um, I've tried to participate in almost all the questions that were posed to me. If I missed a question or a particular concern, please let me know. I think the best way that we can learn together is continuing to use not only those specific um, lesson specific discussion boards, but the discussion boards that's just the Q&A discussion board that kind of relate back to all of our lessons. So if you have an inquiring question or concern, something you want to, to shoot off to me, just let me know. We're looking at chart number uh, 14. Uh, on page, well, page 14, uh, uh, the chart in the DuPont book about involuntary or voluntary um, addiction. And uh, we've been talking about past experiences as well. We, um, also, we've also talked about drug testing information at the end of lesson number two, which your book kind of skims over a tad bit. But I did want to give you additional information because it's a common theme in, in treatment and addiction. Should we drug test? Should we not? In what settings? Um, what's the philosophy behind that? And that kind of opens up even a bigger can of worms in terms of societal drug testing within helping environments, within social services, the educational setting. And it, it simply is not as cut and dry as it should be. A drug testing used as a punitive measure really is not very successful, to be honest. Drug testing that's used in a productive rehabilitation measure in terms that it helps individuals set goals for sobriety and as part of a regular treatment regimen is actually extremely successful. And I, I may share some of those items with you um, in letter lessons, certainly in our substance abuse counseling classes where we beginning to offer in fall semester and spring semester, that will be a common a common theme um, in terms of how to integrate some of these ideas in the counseling environment. For this course, it's more of a general course about what addiction means, what it is, what it is not, is it what we've been taught to believe, and so forth. Um, in our lessons, our lessons this semester is, or this lesson is seven pages. Um, uh, we have a short video, or actually not so short, it's under 60 minutes though, of the origin and history of opiates, of morphine, and other painkillers that provides a pretty good historical perspective that existed in the 70s. So the video itself is, is quite old, honestly, but again, uh, has some great validity to it. We, we also uh, introduced the, the Beetle for Boy book uh, a tad bit more, provide links for some readings. The, the actual book uh, uh, came out of a uh, oracle that, that David Shelf wrote um, in New York Magazine in 2005 about his experiences with the son and, and his sense of failure and, and success and so forth. Plus, I've also included a video from David, the author, and a video of David and Nick together um, from the Today Show many, many years ago. Plus, I provided several other uh, narrative links that you may find interesting. 
I've also included a page on Nick's shelf, the, the main character of the, the book, that Nick's actually wrote two, two books. One is called Tweak. It was his first book. And We All Fall Down, which is relatively new uh, writing, also included a couple of videos from Nick as well that you may find interesting. Um, Nick has struggled to stay clean and has had bouts, uh, bouts of relapse continually um, his entire life and even recently. So um, this is certainly not an example of, of someone who has been able to find long-term consistent recovery, which is normal, to be honest. Almost everyone who has been truly addicted to relapses, I've met very few people that have not relapsed. And to be honest, if you don't relapse, I'm not sure the person actually met the clinical definition of addiction. Part of finding sobriety and clean time, part of recovery, is actually usually relapse, uh, going back to the same drug. Relapse really isn't that important, to be honest. What we do with the relapse and how we respond to the relapse um, is really much more important because if the client responds negatively to that amount of relapse and, and goes back into the hole of, of egocentric behaviors and this belief that I've lost all the progress and success I, I had, either for the past five days of sobriety, the past five years, or the past 50 years, is extremely hard to, uh, to pull the person up. But if we can be relapse or, or using again, after we've been clean for a certain period of time as a learning process, as a process that no, we didn't lose that five days, five years, or 50 years of sobriety. We'll still have that. We just have to take what we learned from that period of sobriety and take what we learned from that period of relapse and try to implement those skills that we learned for the next time and the next go around. I've always, I frequently said, especially to clients, getting clean is not that hard. Staying clean, staying clean is much harder, and what we do when we relapse is, is much harder. Um, helping clients understand that relapse is normal uh, is a major key uh, uh, for success. That doesn't mean we give clients permission to, to relapse and go back into their own behaviors, but we also must be realistic at the same time. I've included a really long article on the spiritual use of psychoactive drugs. This was written again in 1997. It was written in Australia, I believe, and it provides an alternative view of drug use, especially in the spiritual sense. Um, DuPont makes a point that drug use, in and of its well, drugs are not good or bad. Drugs are just there. It's how we use the substance. Society, in terms of society and personal use, if we use that drug for a negative sense, which 99% of the population does, then that's what's wrong and creates all the problems with drug use. Um, we will be offering a, a drugs overview course as part of our new substance abuse degree, and uh, that particular degree will introduce this idea in depth uh, in later semesters. Last but not least is the assignments page. We have um, I'm asking folks to review all these lesson pages, to read another short history of, of, of drug use in society, um, read chapters two and three from your DuPont book as a requirement, and uh, participating in one discussion board post. But I do hope that we can continue to, to participate in a give and take a conversation on our question and answer discussion boards and the, the Ask the Instructor a Question discussion boards. I hope you're learning a lot. I've learned a lot about the course and the students in that way, and um, hopefully this video helps. Um, if I can help in the future, or if I need to, to provide some one-on-one -on -one assistance or meet with you individually, via telephone or video conference or, or even in the office, uh, please let me know. Take care.